What's going on nation and welcome back to my dumbest mistake series. If you missed my last video where I went over the six dumbest burpee mistakes sabotaging your gains, be sure to go down in that info section below and check it out. But for today's video, we're going to be covering the four dumbest mistakes for one of my absolute favorite exercises for building thick and blocky abs and that is the ab pull down. But before we get started, if you haven't turned on video notifications yet, make sure you click that bell so you never miss a new video upload. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram for more workout tips and motivation. And for those of you who are looking for a full 12 week program to take your training to the next level and see some serious results, make sure you head over to MuscularStrength.com. I got programs that you can choose from that have to do with building muscle and strength, purely building muscle, and even a 12 week home fat loss program as well. Be sure to check it out. Now let's get started with those ab pull down mistakes. All right guys, so the first mistake is not properly adjusting the pulley before you get started with the movement. And this can be two different ways. Number one, if you have the pulley too high, depending on the cable machine that you're working on, it's very possible for the weight stack to smash into the top of the machine halfway through the movement. It's happened to me, I'm sure it's happened to you guys, it makes a really loud noise <laughs> and you look kind of ridiculous and you can't get a full crunch. So being too high is not good. And the opposite holds true as well. If you go too low, even a little bit too low, it really starts to change the range of motion of the movement and how the weight is pulling on your torso. Remember, the entire point of this exercise is you want to overload your abs as much as possible. So if you have the pulley even a little bit too low, in order to get a proper crunch in, you gotta start moving farther and farther away from the pulley, the pulley itself, which is gonna change how you hold the bar and how you do the crunch. So you'll still get a stretch in your abs, you'll still be able to come all the way down, but you'll quickly notice that you won't be able to lift as much weight, and like I said, that defeats the purpose of the exercise. We're trying to overload our abs. So the proper placement for this pulley is to actually bring it to about the same height as your head, maybe a little bit taller, because what you want to do is be able to get almost directly underneath the pulley, because that's going to place you in the strongest position to lift the most amount of weight. And I'll show you what I mean real quick. You get into position like this. I like to hold the attachment behind my head. And then once you're in place, you're able to come all the way up, do a full crunch, and come back up and really overload those abs. Mistake number two is actually the wrong placement of the bar attachment. And I briefly just talked about that on mistake number one. When you perform this movement, the way you want to hold this bar is directly behind your head and almost having it rest across your neck right here. And I'll explain to you why. I see a lot of people in my gym when they do this movement what they actually do is they get into position, but instead of holding this bar behind their head, they like to hold their arms out in front of them like this. Now, as soon as you start to hold this out in front of you like that, you're gonna instantly start to feel your biceps getting engaged, your shoulders getting engaged, your lats are stretched out, so your lats are getting engaged, and because of the angle, you're gonna have to grip this thing much harder in order to hold on to it. So that's gonna cause some forearm fatigue. So you're basically getting a lot of upper body fatigue before you even get in place to do your first repetition. And then the second issue is if your arms are out in front of you like this, you're not going to be able to get a full crunch at the bottom of the movement because what's going to happen is as you come down, your elbows are going to hit the ground before you're able to come all the way in. So if you're coming up like this and coming down, your elbows hit the ground and you might think that's full range of motion, but what needs to happen is you actually need to come all the way in like this. So having outstretched arms like that is gonna cause a lot of upper body fatigue and your elbows hitting the ground is gonna prevent you from doing full range of motion. Now, the way you wanna do this exercise to prevent the most amount of upper body fatigue and to get the maximum range of motion is grab it the same way, but hold it directly behind your head and firmly against your neck. So just like this. And then once you're in place like this, you can even almost, well a trick that I like to do is I'll even bring my elbows under my head like that and I'll lock them into place. So it almost looks like you're choking yourself. You're not choking yourself, 
but it looks like you're choking yourself. <laughs> and from here, this is actually still a bit too light for me. It's pulling me forward. There we go. And then from here, what you can do is lock it in, come all the way up, and then you can easily crunch all the way down like this on every single repetition, and you're not going to fatigue out before you finish. And it should go without saying, guys, if your legs are like this, you can't get your elbows in between and get a full crunch. So make sure your legs are spread out quite a bit so that as you do the crunch, your elbows can get between your legs and you can get a harder contraction at the bottom. And I know some of you guys are going to ask about using maybe a rope attachment or two handles to do this movement. You can use these things, but in my experience, the only way to really get the most upper body fatigue out of the movement is to use a bar attachment like this or a straight bar attachment. If you use the ropes, you still got to grip that thing pretty hard in order to hold it in place. Same thing with the individual handles. And also too, if you start to get forearm fatigue, because if you hold this against your neck, usually it takes everything out of the equation, but you still can get some pretty intense forearm fatigue. If that happens to you, at least with a straight bar, you could put on some wrist straps wrap it around and do your reps like that and then you don't have to worry about your forearms at all. The third mistake is not crunching properly. Chances are that if you've done this exercise and you felt it more in your hip flexors than your abs, so you decided to take this out of your workout routine, it's because you weren't doing an actual torso crunch, which is what you have to do in order for this exercise to be effective. What tends to happen to a lot of people, especially as they start to increase the weight, is form kind of goes out the window because mentally you still think you're doing a crunch, but in reality what the movement looks like is this. You're coming up and you're sitting as you do your reps. And if you're sitting as you're doing reps, you're definitely going to feel those hip flexors firing a lot more than you're going to feel those abs firing. So in order to maximize the efficiency of this movement, what you need to understand is that your glutes and your abs are synergistic muscle groups and your hip flexors are antagonistic. So if you want to take the hip flexors completely out of the movement, something that you can do to help is flex your glutes to hold you in place as you're flexing and crunching your abs on every single repetition. So you'll look something more like this. Your hips are going to stay in one place. You're going to make sure that you maximize the stretch by arching your back at the top of the movement and you're going to make sure you maximize the contraction by going into spinal flexion at the bottom. So flex those glutes, flex your abs all the way down like this, Fle keep flexing those glutes, keep flexing your abs and hold that as you go up and down. And as you can see, the only thing moving is my torso and I'm maximizing the stretch in the abs by going into spinal extension at the top as much as I can and I'm maximizing the crunch by going into spinal flexion and getting my elbows as far down as I possibly can. And the fourth and final mistake guys is not utilizing a spotter. This is my absolute favorite exercise to punish my abs to the point where I'm forcing them to grow because you can overload them with so much weight. However, once your core starts to become really strong, you are going to get to a point to where you can do the entire stack and you're going to be pinning more weight to it, but by the time that happens, the stack might start to get heavier than how much you weigh. And so then what starts to happen is as you try to do your repetitions, you're fighting more so your body lifting off the ground than trying to focus on performing proper form by doing the full stretch and the full crunch throughout every single repetition. So what you need to do is try to find a spotter to come over and stand on your feet. And if you're looking for a good time at the gym, nothing is more funny to me than asking somebody for a spot and then bringing them over to a cable machine and being like, all right, so this is what's going to happen. I'm going to go down like this and you're going to stand on my feet while I do these repetitions. <laughs> and Their face is priceless, guys. But I can assure you, so many more people at my gym do this exercise and will spot each other because they had never done it before. They saw me doing it or I asked them to spot me and then they realized the benefits of the movement and how you can actually overload your abs with it and how much better of an exercise it is when someone does stand on your feet. Like if you 
have a really hard time um, not moving your hips back and forward like we talked about earlier in the video and you start to get a lot more hip flexor engagement. Even if you're not using super heavy weight, if you invite a spotter to come over and stand on your feet, it'll make it a hundred times easier for you guys to learn proper form and just focus on the extension and flexion on every single repetition. Now, if you don't have access to someone to spot you, I mean, you can try to whip something up with some dumbbells or maybe your barbell or maybe there's a machine close by, you can kind of anchor your feet into that. But I mean, the easiest way to do it, the most effective way to do it, is just to have someone stand on your feet. So if you're shy, it, it might stink the first few times, but I guarantee you, you will find someone to spot you and they'll want to try the exercise as well. So don't be shy. When it comes to building blocky abs and overloading with as much weight as possible, especially on this exercise, you have to go outside your comfort zone and just ask somebody to stand on your feet. Alright guys, so that wraps up today's video, the four dumbest mistakes when performing the ab pull down. But I want you to keep in mind that other mistakes I've talked about when it comes to doing abdominal crunches in general still apply to this movement as well. For example, I talk about breathing out as you do the crunch and flex your abs on every single repetition. So, if you missed my video where I talked about the three reasons why you will never have abs, make sure you go down to the info section below, click the link, and watch that really quick because I'm sure it'll be really helpful to you for your ab training in general. As for sets and reps, what I like to do is switch it up from week to week. So for example, week one, what I will do is four to five sets and train with as heavy weight as I can for around 15 repetitions. And then for the week two, what I'll do is train with as heavy as I can, four to five sets, but this time I'm trying to get 30 to 40 repetitions. So I have to use lighter weight, but I'm gonna be doing a lot more volume. For me, this has been how I've always trained my abs and how I've been able to actually build out blocky abs that stick out versus having abs but more of a flat core. I like the blocky abs, I like the blocky look, so that's how I train. So if you're trying to get that as well, you want your abs to pop a bit more and have deeper cuts in the middle and the sides, this can help you too. But I will say, no matter what, I still do this ab exercise first, no matter which week it is. Mainly because you can do the most amount of weight with it and you want to save all your energy to, for the exercise you're doing first so you can maximize the efficiency of the movement. Also guys, I train my abs two to three times a week. Training frequency is totally up to you. It depends on you know, how much you want to train your abs. Your abs recover quite quickly. They're one of the muscle groups that can take you know, a really massive beating and recover from that. So training two to three times a week isn't out of the question. So if it's an area you really want to focus on and you really want to develop, take my advice, alternate the weeks with heavy weight and light weight and hit those abs two to three times a week. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to smash that like button if you love this series and be sure to also let me know what you guys want to see for the next Dumbest Mistake series by posting your exercise suggestions down in that comment section below. And as always, more good stuff coming soon. See you guys.